Well, greetings, fixed blade lovers. Uh, hopefully you are a fixed blade lover. And uh, perhaps you might love this knife. You just never know. And uh, <laughs> be telling you a little bit about it in a moment, but uh, probably we'll take it out of the Kydex sheath and it's a dangler. Comes out pretty easily. There is a big leather loop you can put your belt through and it swings to and fro. Uh, probably not a bad way to carry a large knife. I'm going to put it there and let you stare and read you a little bit from the TOPS website. Unleash your modern warrior spirit with the Topps Knives Modern Gladius, a perfect fusion of ancient power and contemporary versatility. Gee, do I sound like an ad? <laughs> well, it shouldn't because I didn't get given this knife. This was bought from White Mountain Knives with my own bucks. So um, this is, the Gladius was designed by the team at Mount, oh, Smoky Mountain and Knife Works. You know those guys. They're the biggest uh, cutlery retailer in the world, I think. They have what is very likely the largest store in the world. Oh, I think I just said that. These guys know knives. So when they asked us if we'd make a design from them, the answer was obviously yes. The modern Gladius is a shorter version of that classic Roman weapon. Double-edged Tonto-esque blade is designed to be great for stabbing thrusts and slashing cuts. Has a fuller on each side of the edge. Tan canvas micarta is tapered very slightly towards the guard to help lock your hand in place and includes fullers on each side of the blade. It comes with a black kydex carry sheath with a dang leather dangler. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I'm out of breath. Uh... Well, tops can be long-winded. I guess a lot of manufacturers can when they're talking about their stuff. So designed by Smoky N Mountain Knife Works. Why can't I say Smoky Mountain Knife Works? It is the modern Gladius, as you can proudly see displayed on the side of the blade, white on black. Tops 23-229. I think that's a stock number made in the U.S. because I don't think these are serialed. Double fuller. Interesting. Uh, they used to use that for blade strength on the swords, as far as I know. And when they say Tonto-esque, yes, if you split this right down the middle, you would have a Tonto, a single-edged Tonto, right? So there is your Tonto. Kind of cool. Double edge, so it feels like a pretty good slasher for a dagger style blade. Normally daggers are not. So um, seems like they've got a shallow enough. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not too thick a blade stock and we're gonna measure all that stuff in a minute. So yeah, you can fit your fingers in here. You can grab it like so. I'm gonna get down close to the background because I have limited space with these large knives. Used to showing you folders. We've got a hole here, which uh, I think you might be able to tie a, a lanyard to if you so choose, if you're going to chop and whatnot. It does have the brown micarta, fairly, fairly typical of tops, handle material. And uh, very typical of tops, it has kind of that um, basically punched out look. I hate to say that, but, you know, it's one of the gripes I have about tops, even though, I mean... So they're talking $200. It was $250, and then they discounted it down to $200. Not sure how popular it's going to be, and I'm not saying anything bad about it either. These relatively sharp corners here pretty much show e an economy way to make the knife. It's from 1095 tool steel, as are, I would say, 90% or so of their uh, knives and it has the black traction coating on it, which is, you know, relatively smooth. I think some of the earlier examples of this were maybe a little rougher. There is a neat video out there of Leo Espinosa, the president of Topps, um, driving this through a car hood multiple, multiple times. 
and uh, then shaving the hair off his arm and whatnot and showing you that it's still sharp and showing you that there's no damage to the point. That's pretty remarkable. We know that, uh, you know, car steel is relatively thin and um, not uh, tempered or whatnot. And we have here a knife that's uh, probably tempered to, I think it was on the specs of the tops website sheath here. Uh, Rockwell 56 to 58 out of 1095. So a lot of you guys might consider that soft, but I'm pretty sure that for a uh, high carbon steel that is not soft and does give you uh, some resistance to uh, breakage and brittleness. So um, here we do have some specs. I'll show them to you anyway in case... We've missed anything, I'll get it later. Overall length of 11.38 inches, six and a half inch blade, six inch cutting edge, uh, six inch secondary edge. I guess uh, that's a category that matches the cutting edge. Blade thickness, uh, 0 .90, uh, 0.19, sorry, 0 0.190. And there's the blade steel 1095, black traction coating, tan canvas micarta. It weighs 8.3 ounces, and the weight with the sheath is 14.3 ounces. So it's a pretty substantial sheath. Um, <clears throat> it feels pretty well balanced in the hand. I mean, I think we're right about at the guard there. Yeah, we're right at the guard. Yep. I mean, and that's that's great. That's where you want it to be. Uh, no choil. Can't don't hook your finger around, or you'll slice your uh, slice your finger pretty good. Again. Um, I don't know, you know, it, this just gives me kind of an unfinished look. And maybe for the money, that's okay. And maybe for the fact that it works, <laughs> if you look at the Tops video, um, that um, it's not a bad thing. You've got the handle is certainly rounded. It's not like you're holding on to anything sharp. It's quite comfortable. It is uh, contoured here in two spots so your fingers do like feel like they have some purchase on it and um, I guess I'll quickly go through the measurements in case any were missed so um, 11 and a half inches yep and uh, actually the cutting edge I get is six and a quarter almost to the handle like almost six and three quarters good thing we measure isn't it unless there's something wrong with my ruler uh, blade stock in millimeters, 4.8 millimeters, almost a 5 millimeter blade stock. And um, 0.19, as they said. And the widest part of the handle, let's see if I can get it without including the, uh, the rivet there. The screw is 0.66. And it's going to be a little narrower if, you, if it matters to you, 0.60 in the shallows here and weight 8.4 ounces i think that's what they said and with the big old dangler sheath that is heavy by virtue of the fact that you've got a massive d-ring here crazy stuff See if I can get it on the scale. Yeah, it's 14 ounces, 14.4 ounces. So a fair amount hanging off your belt, you know, fair amount. Uh, sheath comes off nicely. Uh, Tops does provide quality sheaths. It is good that you've got this extra inch protection here because very often, if for any reason a knife gets jammed down, or into you, let's say you're carrying it and you're in a car accident or whatnot, and not on your horse or you fall off your horse, it uh, is going to give you a little more protection there. Uh, flexible sheaths, leather ones particularly, when that bends and you've got too much at the end, uh, that point can come through. And uh, if you don't mean it to cut something, it may cut, so cut something. So um, here is your snap. I don't know if I'll unsnap it or not. There you go. So this can come off. Um, uh, this is a pull the dot. Oh, that's a screw. 
Okay. So this is on a pivot with a big O-ring there. So you can rig it up any way you want. Um, looks like you could remove that. So if you wanted to go to a DCC or a uh, tech lock or something like that, you certainly could. I think they did it this way to look kind of traditional, kind of like you're carrying a sword instead of a knife. So I haven't tested it, haven't done the car, uh, you know, car hood penetration or anything like that. I'll trust the fact that uh, Leo Espinosa did uh, a super job, and he really did with that uh, demo. It's impressive. You have uh, kind of an armor-piercing point here. Looks like an arrowhead. It is relatively fine right there where the grinds meet. And we'll eat cut, as Doug likes to say. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, tears. Maybe it's me. I mean, it's uh, you got sort of a sharp edge on there. Definitely got a piercy point. No problems there. And, uh, you know, as Tim Kell has recently said, because a knife won't cut paper, and I'm not making excuses. Because a knife won't cut paper doesn't mean it won't cut flesh. And uh, it's slippery, but this is one of those, and I'm not a hairy guy, so I'm not going to shave any hair off my arms. That is shaving sharp, okay? That is shaving sharp and very pointy. Uh, stropping that up would probably give you what you want if you wanted more of a slasher. Uh, that's happened with other blades as well, even some... Very high-end blades need a little bit of tweaking. Speaking of a little higher-end blade, we have a Bastinelli Grozo or Grazo here as another double-edged knife of about the same size, a little tiny bit shorter. Notice that's got a fuller down the middle too and the uh, nice uh, serrations there. This is out of uh, N690, and it is... Uh, a very, very cool uh, dagger designed by uh, Bastion Coves for Bastinelli. And uh, another double edge. This is a custom. And this is from Ken Vahikate of Black Rock Knives. This is a ring dagger. And it's going to be a little bit shorter than the Modern Gladius. It too has a ring, but you can actually put your finger through that should you choose. About an inch and a half shorter overall. And uh, about the same. We even up the guards there. It's about an inch and a quarter or so shorter in the blade. Really nice work by uh, Ken. All hand done. Great stuff. We're talking about somewhere in the $300 territory here. So you bump the price of the production knife up just a little bit. Ken gives you a uh, discrete carry type clip as well that's uh, secured to the center of the sheath. Very nice custom gray sheath, Kydex. And um, this is not a dagger, but here we have the TKL Mercenary. Now that is the way to build a sheath. That is configurable. It has a tensioner. It is just perfectly done. Haven't run into better sheaths than what uh, Tim is turning out. Anyway, this is a single edge knife, uh, more in the battlefield sort of uh, a vein with his nickel boron coating on it. Kind of looks kind of cloudy there on the blade. And that one's about an inch shorter overall. And uh, maybe about half an inch or so shorter in the blade, the mercenary. So really just showing you these for comparatives in the size range. They're not going to be one for one replicas or duplicates. So, you know, um, I think 
if you wanted to carry this, you certainly could. I would think like a shoulder rig or something because it does lock into the sheath quite well. If you wanted to use the dangler, then uh, you're going to make no bones about it. You're going to be out there showing that knife off. <laughs> and if you live in an area where you can carry a fixed blade knife on your belt, then cool, good for you. And uh, it's kind of set up for that. Well, let me know what you think. You may have some uh, points you like to make on your own of what this is all about. I think it was a nice endeavor for Smoky Mountain to go ahead and design this and certainly for Tops to turn it out. Seems like they can turn out just about anybody's wild idea. They have done a great job with versatility. The numbers of models on Tops is just, uh, it's crazy. And I've got a few I like certainly better than others. And, you know, my criticism with the, the whole kind of punched out kind of look is I think just what they need to do to stay within the, the, the threshold of, of what they're, uh, they're pricing these at. So, um, again, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. You'll be notified of new videos when they drop. I'll be back soon.